Hey guys, Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you may realize that I've just gotten back from um, a pretty epic Star Alliance flight to Kenya, to and from Kenya, and well, I'm getting ready to head back, this time on a Sky Team flight. This time I'm flying with Delta on their longest route from Atlanta all the way to Johannesburg. It's going to be a pretty epic flight. If you're not a subscriber, by the way, you might want to do that because I've got plenty of trips coming up, but this channel is all about trip reports from all over the world. So let's check out Delta service from Atlanta to Johannesburg. I made this trip with my brother and we began in the E Sky Club. I visited all of the Sky Clubs in a recent visit to Atlanta and I made a video about that. If you haven't seen it, I'll include a link in the description. There was a little bit of time for plane spotting, but then we headed to One Flew South a restaurant on the e-concourse that serves sushi. It's excellent, and if you have some extra time, I highly recommend it. From there, we headed over to the Sky Club in the F concourse, where we could have done some watch shopping. We didn't. Instead, we headed upstairs to the mezzanine, where we got killer views of the ramp here in Atlanta, the world's busiest airport in terms of aircraft operations and passenger volume. It's hard to go hungry at the Atlanta airport. We chose instead to just stick with the sushi we had and save room for the food on the plane, and there was plenty of it. This was a long trip, almost 16 hours across the North and South Atlantic Oceans. My seat for this flight was 7A, which is the very last row of the first business class cabin. There's also a mini cabin back behind. Typically mini cabins are better in my opinion, but Delta's just isn't. The bathroom is right there and it's pretty bright. I don't recommend it. But here's my seat, again, 7A. The cabin's laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration, giving everyone aisle access. Those middle rows are best for couples. Now, this seat in the front of my seat is not another seat. It's just an extension of the bed. With only 26 passengers here, there's plenty of room in the overhead bins. Now, I think 7A and 7D are the best seats in this cabin. The only drawback is during boarding, the view isn't that great. Cheers. Now, at this point, everything seemed to be going pretty smoothly. They closed the doors, and we were ready to be off. But then they opened them again, somebody got on, and then this happened. All of the bags are currently being unloaded. Apparently, there were two late-arriving passengers. One made it. They got on the plane. The other one didn't. So the ground crew had to go through every single bag on the plane, find the missing passenger's bag, remove it, and then put the bags back on the plane. It took a long time. And the whole time, all I could do was look at the jet bridge, which never moved. It's been an hour, uh, and we're still on the ground as they unload all of the bags. Uh, this is kind of an uh, unexpected and uh, undesired <laughs> delay, as I guess all of them are. But this one uh, is unpleasant because there is no end in sight. Uh, so we wait uh, a little longer. But then suddenly, about 90 minutes into the delay, everything changed, and we were off. Now the seats on this plane are tired, and you can really see that in my across the aisle neighbor's inability to get his screen to stay put. This was a frustration for many passengers, I'm afraid to say, and in fact, on the return flight for me, I sat in 7D and the frame for the TV was loose. It's time for these seats to be replaced, and fortunately they will be. More about that in a few minutes, but for now, the in-flight entertainment can be controlled either by the remote control or the touchscreen. I find the selections on Delta planes to be more than adequate. I think they do an excellent job of providing really great content for passengers. 
Unfortunately, I had a little trouble with my screen, as you can see here. I don't think the producers of the movie intended it to look that way. That said, the in-flight moving map and flight tracker were certainly uh, functional and very useful on this long flight. Delta are very proud of the LSTN headphones they provide in business class. Now, unfortunately, I don't find them to be that great. I prefer my QC20s by Bose. I think they're some of the best headphones out on the market today. I like the size and do a great job of keeping the noise out. Highly recommend them. These, not so much. Let's take a closer look at the seat. Delta provides Weston Heavenly bedding, which I find to be incredibly comfortable. The seat does go flat. Unfortunately, though, these adjustments are well lit and they're very bright and shine right in your face when the cabin's dark. There's a headphone jack, a USB plug, and a means to hack into the plane if you're some sort of a spy. Additionally, there's a reading light right here, right where you'd want it, just above your left shoulder. Now, in seat 7A and D, there's room behind your seat for storage. Now, it's not technically supposed to be storage, but it's pretty convenient. Delta provides Tumi amenity kit with a lot of very useful, well, amenities for a flight of this length, including an eye shade, toothpaste, a toothbrush, tissues, and a number of other things that are quite handy. This flight was a culinary masterpiece. There was so much food. First though, I'd like to say I wish airlines would do something about freezing cold silverware. It's so cold when you first get it, it's almost unusable. Now, the meal experience on this flight was really quite substantial. We ate three separate times. Now what I've done for this video is to highlight both the food going down and the food coming back to Atlanta. I'll try to differentiate, but that way you can see what the menus look like. Now food service began with warm nuts and a drink from the bar. I chose to have a gin and tonic. That was followed up by an appetizer. On the way down, it was salad with prawns and corn chowder. Coming back, it was a lamb kofta kebab, a salad and butternut soup. This was really good. The main course on the way to Johannesburg was a delicious chicken dish. On the way back, I had curry, also chicken. You need to get a little bit more creative, don't I? Now, I chose not to have dessert and instead looked out the window at the North Atlantic. Good night. That was great sleep. Not as good as a 787 or A350, but, uh, you know, great sleep. I really prefer the newer products for that reason. Now the good news about the 777 is that it's going to have the new um, Delta One cabin along with the premium economy uh, uh, the cabin installed. The entire fleet uh, will have that new cabin by 2019, and so next year. Here's a bit of a sense of what that cabin might look like. This video is from my A350 experience from last year. You'll notice it's a pretty vast improvement over what you see in the cabin I'm in right now. Shortly after I woke up, more food. On the way down, a bagel with cream cheese was provided, and coming back, a roast beef croissant. The crews on these flights were really spectacular. I enjoyed chatting with them and really getting to know them uh, during the course of the 15 or 16 hours uh, I was on these planes. You see, there's a real opportunity to connect with cabin crews, especially in business class. It was a nice touch. You know, I never even had to wait for anything. As soon as I woke up or even had a thought of wanting something, it seemed like they were ready, willing, and able to serve, despite the length of the flight. I think uh, that was really the highlight of this trip for me, was just how wonderful the cabin crews were. Speaking of the crew, between the two business class cabins, they kept assorted snacks available throughout the flight. Internet access was available above 10,000 feet, and I was so glad because it meant I could watch YouTube's funniest trip reporter, Paul Stewart. Go check out his channel if you haven't already. While internet access does come at a cost, Delta makes both instant messaging and text messaging free to everyone on board. 
Hunger was never a problem. A chicken sandwich on the way to Johannesburg right before landing, and cheese and chive scrambled eggs right before landing in Atlanta on the way back. That was a great flight, I thought. Hope uh, you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I guess I need to kind of review four things. These are the four things I think are most important in a business class flight, or any flight really. Uh, number one, uh, the seat. It's tired, to be very honest uh, with you. Uh, but good news, Delta's gonna be refurbishing these 777s uh, over the next uh, year or so, so by 2019, they'll have the, the same cabin as the A350. That'll be great. Um, second thing, uh, the food I thought was really good, remarkably good, especially that first course. Uh, second, or I guess third of all, if I can count, uh, is the in-flight entertainment, and it was okay. Uh, it wasn't as good as, say, Eddie Had or Emirates, but uh, it was okay. Uh, and that's an important feature on such a long flight. And then finally, the crew. This was really the, the standout uh, star for this flight for me. They were excellent. I really hope to get to see these guys again in, in, uh, on a flight in the future. They were so much fun. All right, well, for now, i got to get on the ground here in Johannesburg. If you'll click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Hope you'll click that red subscribe button so you can follow along with some future trips. If you didn't like the video, give me feedback about what I can do better. But between now and the next time, see you in the sky. Until the triple seven is departed safely at the gate.